Hello and welcome to SOFO's Nature in Our Neighborhood. My name is Crystal Oaks and I'm one of the nature educators at the South Fork Natural History Museum. Today I'm going to be talking about bird's nests in the winter. Most birds will need a nest in the spring and summer to hold their eggs and chicks. Since the eggs and young are easy food for many predators, the nests are usually well hidden and only revealed after the leaves have fallen off of the trees. It is surprising how many nests are right next to busy trails, sidewalks, and even parking lots and are not noticed until fall and winter. There are three basic types of nests birds will use to hold their eggs and young. A cavity nest, ground nests, and saucer or cup nests. A few species of birds will use a cavity nest, usually a hole in the tree or a man-made nest box during very cold days or during winter storms. Other birds that may use a cavity nest or nest box for shelter in the winter include black-capped chickadees, downy woodpeckers, white-breasted nuthatches, tufted titmice, and a few other birds who like to nest in cavities. The simplest nest is a shallow dish scratched into the ground called a scrape nest and is usually made by gulls, terns, sandpipers, and plovers in our area. The idea behind a scrape nest is mostly to keep the eggs from rolling away and to fit the parent bird's body to better protect the eggs. Needless to say, this nest type is very difficult to find in the winter, but it is the reason that many of our beaches are fenced off during the spring and summer. The eggs and young of piping plovers, herring gulls, and common terns are very camouflaged, meant to look like stones and speckled sand. When scared, the chicks will hunker down into a divot in the ground and sit very still and not move until the danger has passed. This works for most of their natural predators whose eyesight is mainly trying to find movement to see where their food is. So a young chick sitting still is not as easily noticed as one that's running around. Unfortunately, this method of protecting themselves makes them very vulnerable to being harassed by dogs, stepped on by people, or even run over by cars. Other ground nests have a bit more effort put into them, such as the ones built by Canada geese, mallards, American black ducks, and mute swans. Since these birds find most of their food in and around water, their nests are usually very close to the water. The more surprising nests for me are the intricately woven nests made by songbirds because they are very well hidden. Most of the nests we find in the bushes are of the saucer or cup shapes and are made of materials that are available to the birds. The most simple saucer nest is made by the morning dove and is a loose mess of twigs with the edges slightly higher than the middle. Saucer and cup nests can be made with twigs, grasses, mud, spider webs, usually more in the case of hummingbirds, lichen, moss, animal hair or fur, snake skins, and unfortunately human garbage, because apparently plastic bags look very similar to snake skins, at least to the birds. This fall and winter, you might find some saucer and cup nests around your own backyard. Keep an eye out for nests of American Robin, Northern Cardinal, Song Sparrow, Gray Catbird, Blue Jay, Baltimore Oriole, which, and Baltimore Oriole, which is more of a hanging basket than cup shape. Now, I cannot end this program without mentioning two of the most exciting and easy to notice nests, the osprey and the bald eagle. Both build very large platform nests, which are reused every year unless a supporting tree or platform collapses. An osprey pair mates for life, returning to the same nest after wintering further south and will add new nesting material every year. They aren't picky about what goes into the nest. Rakes, beach towels, seaweeds, large and small sticks, pretty much whatever they happen to find in the salt marshes and bays that they prefer to live. Bald eagles are the newest recovery success on Long Island. And they were very rare with only about 500 breeding pairs in the United States. But with the ban of DDT, there are now at least 170 breeding pairs in the state of New York with five breeding pairs in Suffolk County. 
I hope that after this program, you will notice and enjoy the bird's nest as the leaves fall off and they are revealed. Please leave the nests where they are. Take pictures and admire how well placed the family was. It is illegal in the state of New York to possess or sell bird's nests without permission from the DEC. If you are lucky enough to discover a nest during the breeding season, please discreetly watch the nest as many birds will abandon a nest if they feel it is in danger. Thank you and we hope to see you at the museum and we always welcome nature questions via phone, email or in person. Mm -hmm.